All right, so Copper Silver Lab. Um, the video that follows this is a couple years old, so it talks about dates like Monday and Wednesday and things like that. Don't worry about that. Just get the video drawings down and so on and so forth. But there is no background information on it, so we do need to make sure you have your background information. Write your beginning question in your lab notebook. We're going to be looking at uh, a single replacement reaction, copper and silver nitrate. The silver will replace the copper. That's also a redox reaction, so we're going to review oxidation reduction. The first thing we need to do is write and balance the equation. Copper metal placed into a silver nitrate solution will precipitate silver solid and create copper 2 nitrate. And that is a aqueous solution. Okay? What type of reaction is that? That's a single replacement. If we think about oxidation numbers, we know the copper is going to have an oxidation number of zero because it's an element by itself. Silver is going to have a plus one. The nitrate is going to be a negative one. The silver on this side is going to be a, have an oxidation number of zero. This copper has an oxidation number of two. This nitrate has an oxidation number of negative one. So, looking at these numbers, what is being oxidized? Whose charge has gone up? Copper has gone from a zero to a plus two. So we write copper becomes copper two and it lost two electrons. Silver is going from a plus one to a zero, so it is losing one electron. Okay. The next thing on here, it asks you, what does percent yield mean? Percent yield means the percent that you produced. In other words, we know how to do percent, the part divided by the total. We're going to figure out the amount that we produced compared to what we should have produced. I'm going to make a, wait a minute, this is what I want, place so that I can do the math here. All right, so percent yield is going to be what you got divided by what you should have gotten. Okay, and times 100. If you are given 0.5 grams of copper, what amount of silver would you expect to get? Well, we look up at our equation. Copper to silver, if we balance this guy, we need two nitrates, so we would make two silvers. So five grams of copper, first we have to change it to uh, moles, 63.55 grams in one mole. That gives us moles of copper. Our ratio of copper to silver is one to two. One mole of copper to two moles of silver. That will tell us how much silver we should make. The amount of silver um, 107.9 and one more and you can do the math on your own. So the next question if you want to get 2.5 grams of silver how much copper how much silver nitrate you're going to solve starting with 2.5 grams of silver our ratio of silver to silver nitrate You can figure out the silver nitrate, the, the uh, molar mass of silver nitrate, and then you'll do the same thing for copper. You'll solve, but instead of putting silver nitrate here, you would have one copper and the molar mass of copper. All right, thank you. Hello and good morning. Today we're going, I've gone ahead and drawn the steps for the first part of the procedure 
um, so that I'm not going to spend quite so much time filming, you guys can always pause to do your drawing. First thing we're going to do today, uh, this is for lab on Tuesday, we're going to be uh, getting ready and to do a single replacement lab. But we're doing this because we want to do the quantitative uh, part of it and use some stoichiometry. Step one, safety-wise, we need to have goggles on. You also cannot have any food, okay, nothing at the lab stations. Really shouldn't even be chewing gum, all right? The silver nitrate can be toxic, so we don't want to have any food. Step two, you need to write out your equation. I'd like you to write it out large so it fills the paper. Copper plus silver nitrate aqueous leads to silver solid plus copper 2 nitrate aqueous. Step 3, you're going to get a piece of copper wire. You're going to get a piece of steel wool. You'll use the steel wool and rub it across the wire so that you're basically removing any copper oxide from the outside of the wire and it'll help it to react more easily. Step four, you'll get a clean, dry 50 milliliter beaker and put your name on it with a Visa Vis pen. Step five, you need to mask the copper wire from step three. You're also going to mask a 50 milliliter beaker that you have your name on, and you'll get a small vial of silver nitrate that'll be a little container of silver nitrate, and you'll mask that, okay? And all that will be recorded in the data table that you're gonna put at the bottom of these in this information, the procedure. Step six, you will pour the silver nitrate crystals into the 50 milliliter beaker. After that, we'll find the mass of the empty vial and you'll figure out how much silver you added to the beaker by subtracting the mass of this from the mass of the vial plus the silver nitrate. Step seven, we need to add 30 milliliters of distilled water. Where do you get your distilled water? Well, of course, from the water bottle at your table. You need to measure it out, 30 milliliters. Step eight, we're going to take that wire and coil it into kind of a, a I don't know, twister, tornado-like thing. And up at the top, you need to keep a little hook because you're gonna hang it over a, a, a wood splint. Step nine and 10, nine, you'll hang it on the wood splint. So let's say that this is my copper wire. It's actually a pair of scissors for ripping seams. And here's my wood splint. You'll hang it like that, okay? But it'll be, of course, coiled around. Then you will take it and you'll set it down into your 50 milliliter beaker, okay? We good? All right, after that, we're gonna let it sit. So you're gonna bring it over to the fume hood, and then on Wednesday, we will come back and you will finish this part of the lab. You need to make a data table. I want you to copy this data table into your lab notebook. Make sure you have a large enough space that you can write. Make sure you put your uh, name and tie or put your title and the observations on the top. Underneath that, you need to have a space for observations because when you are done on Wednesday, when you come back in, first thing you're going to do is write down what do you see in the beaker. All right, now, all right, we have. I cannot move that. There we go. Day two. I'm actually just going to move it up here. I'm make it easier. For day two, you'll start out by making an observation. So this will be Wednesday morning of your little beaker with your coil in it. Then you will take the beaker, and remember here is my fake coil, and you're gonna take this and tap it on top of the beaker because you wanna shake as much of the silver off into the bottom of the beaker as you can. Step three, you will get, you'll have, I will have acetone for you, probably put one container of it at each station. You'll dip your copper wire into the acetone and then let it dry. This should dry fairly quickly, that's why we're drip, dipping it into the acetone. Then you'll take your copper wire, find the final mass of it, and then you'll record that. Then you're going to get a piece of filter paper, find the mass of the filter paper, fold it up, put it into a funnel. 
Step five, you'll pour your 50 milliliter beaker solution of silver nitrate into the funnel and allow that to drain through. You want to get all of your little silver uh, crystals in there too. So you can use a uh, wash bottle to squirt up inside of the 50 milliliter beaker and wash all that in. You want all of your solid in here. You don't want anything left in here because that's going to screw with your final results. Step six says to wash it. What that means is you fill the um, filter paper up almost to overflowing with distilled water and let it drain through. And you're going to let it drain through three times. After that, carefully take your filter paper out. You can kind of open it up. You don't need to open it all the way, although you can. And you're going to set it on a watch glass. Make sure you've put your name on that watch glass. And again, we'll take it to the fume hood for drying purposes. The last day we'll simply be measuring and doing calculations and we won't need a video for that. All right. Thank you very much.